Now, what is a convolutional code? Well, this is a form of error correction coding. And in order to correct for errors in a data sequence, that sequence needs to have structure or memory between the bits. And what do we mean by that? Well, let's think of a basic block code. So here might be a block code. You might have three bits, maybe a 0, 1, 0, or any combination of bits. And if we had a three input, four output block code, we would one way to do it is you take your input bits and you modulo 2 add them together. And this produces a bit that we often call a parity bit. And if we then sent out four bits, the three input bits plus the parity bit, uh, then we would have some structure in the output sequence because every three bits would be followed by a fourth bit, which would be the modulo 2 addition of those three bits. And then if you received that sequence and if an error happened, you'd be able to tell that an error had happened because you could see if the first three bits were received uh, and one of them was in error, then it would not match with the parity bit because you can check the structure at the receiver. So this is uh, the concept of adding memory and redundancy into a sequence so that you can correct for errors. Well, how do we do it in a more clever way than the block code? And the convolutional code is one of those examples. So let's think of the same picture here, but now instead of this being filled with three elements and then make a fourth and then move on to the next three elements, we're now going to think of this as a shift register. So let's say our input data is going to be clocked in on the left-hand side and that these are shift registers. So every time you do a digital clock counter, you move the elements along. Okay, um, otherwise you're still producing something called a parity bit. Uh, every time you clock them along, you're going to produce another parity bit. So let's look at one example here. Let's say we start off with filling the shift register with zeros, and let's say we're going to send a digital data sequence. The next uh, elements are zero, zero, then a one, and then a couple of zeros. And uh, thinking of this from, from signals and systems point of view, uh, this is a system, and this particular input is a delta function. It's all zeros except for a one. It's an impulse. So what we expect to see out is the impulse response. But this is not a linear system because the addition here is modulo two. That's an important difference. But let's look at the example here. Okay, so if we're filled with zeros, then the output, uh, and we put a zero in, these all clock along, we're still full of zeros, and the output is going to be zero. The next input comes in, they all clock along, it's another zero. The addition of all of those, uh, I'm just drawing the parity bits here now. I'm just saying what the parity bit is. The first one was zero. The second one is also going to be zero. And then when a one comes in here, so let's I'll just draw underneath here what's happening here now. So the elements of the shift register will be like this when we've, we've put the two zeros in and we're now putting the one in. So we've got elements of the shift register one zero zero. So now we're going to have one plus zero plus zero, which equals one. So the next output is a one. Then the next time slot, the one shifts along and we've got zero, one, zero here now. And the output now is going to be another one. And again, the next time it shifts along and the output again, as you can see, zero, zero, one is going to be another one. And then after that, the zeros uh, are filling up again because as, as this zero has come in, there it shifts along, this zero comes in and shifts along. Uh, and then so we're getting zeros after this. So here, if we think again back in systems and signals um, language, we've put an impulse in and we've got an, the response of that impulse. This is an impulse response. It's not a linear system. It's this digital with modulo two additions. But you can see that that single input has uh, at that one time data has now appearing as outputs at three different times. So this is the structure in the output sequence. And if you were to receive this sequence, you'd be looking for that structure. And if your receive sequence did not have this structure, then you would know that an error had happened. Of course, uh, whether you can correct that error or not depends on how good your parity check functions are. And if you have just one parity bit like this, then it's not going to be possible to correct the error. You can detect it. So for example, if this one came as error as a zero, you wouldn't know 
actually at the receiver, if, if you just received a zero here instead of a one, you wouldn't know if that was the one where the error had happened or this is the one where the error had happened. So you need more sophisticated in order to correct the errors. So how do we do that? Uh, we just add more functions. And I, I just make the point here, um, sorry, that should be a zero, um, that this is like a convolution because you're getting the shifting and multiplying and adding. This is multiplied by one, multiplied by one, multiplied by one, and added together. So shifting, multiplying, and adding, that's the process of linear convolution, and this is why these are called convolutional codes. So we can have a different, uh, another parity bit, which we could generate by modulo two adding the these two elements, for example, and maybe this is, do we call these data bits here, uh, and we call these coded bits. This would be coded bit one, coded bit two, where we're multiplying by zero, one, and one. And maybe we make another coded bit where we multiply by one, uh, one, zero, one. So we, we're getting this one coming through, nothing of the second one, and one of the third. And this would give us another coded bit. So in this case, this is a, so now, now what's, uh, let's go back and look at our example here. So what are we going to be getting out? So when it's all full of zeros, we're going to be getting a zero and a zero. So this is going to be the first time slot. We, and then the three parity bits, the second time slot, and then the corresponding three parity bits. And in this case, again, it's zero, zero. The next time slot corresponds to this one here where we've got one zero zero. So we've already worked out the first parity bit is a one. The next parity bit will be for C2 will be zero because there'll be a one here and zeros here. So this is a zero. And then the third parity bit, we've got a one here now when, the, when we have this elements in the shift register. And so this is going to be a one here. And then we can see for the next one is one, one, zero. Uh, the next one, 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 and then we're back to all zeros. Okay, and so this is a convolutional code where every time there's one sim, one data bit going in, there are three bits coming out, three output bits or three coded bits. So this is a rate one third convolutional code. Okay, so uh, and we've got this memory that's in the system structure in our sequence and so now we've got more complex structure because we've got three coded bits and now it turns out this isn't this is a good design and we can actually correct for the errors um, to find out more about correcting errors there's a link to a video uh, below uh, that I'm uh, making on the way to correct errors but here just to finish this I'll make one point here you've essentially now got two options because this, every time you put one data bit in, you've got to now start sending three, you've got to send three data bits. So one option is to send three times as fast. So you've got to uh, three times faster. Um, and if you're doing it with the same power, which you would be because you can't just uh, magically have more power, uh, then this is going to imply that you need three times the bandwidth. So if you're going to do it with the same modulation format, you would need three times the bandwidth because you're sending them three times faster. And it also means that the energy in a coded bit equals only one third the energy in the original bits because they're only lasting for a third as long. Okay, so what this means is, and it's just important to think about this just for a minute, is that the the errors that you would have got in your uncoded bits at a certain rate, you're going to get errors in these coded bits at a higher rate because they've only got a third of the energy. So you're going to get more errors in this sequence than you would have got if you'd sent this sequence. However, because you have structure in this sequence, you can now correct those errors. Or you can at least correct most of those errors. The, the amount that you can correct depends on how powerful your code is, depends on which of these modulate, uh, which of these modulo two additions you chose, and that's what is called designing the code. So here we've chosen the first one adds up all three, the next one adds up 
the second and third. This one adds up the first and the third. But of course, we've only chosen to have three in our shift register. We could have more elements of our shift register, and then we have more choices over the way we generate these parities. And of course, we could choose to have four of them or five of them, uh, and that's design choice of the code. And that goes to how much memory and structure is in the code, and that goes to how many of the errors you can correct. But the important point is at a fundamental level, you, you have less energy per coded bit, which, makes you, which means you make more errors in the coded bits, but because you have structure, you can correct most of those errors. And as long as you design your code so that you can correct more of the errors than would have happened originally, then you're in good shape and it's a good thing to do. Uh, this way of doing it means you need three times the bandwidth, uh, but there is another way to do it, another option to do it, is you send at the same rate, send at the same rate, but you now use a modulation format, which is a higher order. So you use higher order modulation. Uh, for example, in this case, instead of BPSK, uh, so instead of BPSK, you would move to, in this case, 8PSK. Because BPSK you send one bit per time slot, 8PSK you would be sending three bits per time slot. Of course, 8PSK, if you're sending with the same power, the, the symbols are closer together, they're harder to tell apart. So the again, exactly the same as in this case, the error of these symbols is going to be higher, but because there's structure, you can correct most of those errors. And that's the main idea of the coding and the fact that this is a convolutional code has these nice properties in this the way the structure is implemented and then it leads to an efficient way of decoding as well um, which we'll cover in another video so don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful it helps others to find the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos